Recently I did a video with the Silverado here replacing the interior lights with LEDs from those old orangey yellow halogen dim bulbs. Another upgrade that I will sometimes do, it depends on the vehicle, is I will upgrade the headlights to LEDs as well. This is, some of these older vehicles, the headlights are a little bit subpar, let's just say. These aren't too bad, and I wouldn't have normally replaced them. In fact, the biggest problem with these lights is that the lenses are kind of yellowy and need to be refinished. I'll do that in another video. Today, just kind of want to show you the difference between the LED plug and play lights. Now, I'm not talking about like you buy a new housing with all the integrated LEDs. Those are different. This is a plug and play bulb. So take your old bulb out, put this LED version in. There's pros and cons to those. I'll show, talk to you about those and we'll see the difference. I've got these lights from Oxido. Oxido. I, I used some for the interior. I didn't know how to pronounce them then. I don't know how to pronounce them now. They sent these to me. So I figured we'll give them a shot and uh, we'll see how they work. We've got high and low. They say the same thing on the boxes, but one of them actually is a high beam, one's a low beam. I'll show you the difference here once we get the boxes open. First thing we gotta do though, is get these uh, out because you need to take the lens out to get to the back side to replace the bulbs. So let's start there. Kind of like we did with the uh, interior lights. Let's do a before and after. So let's look what the bulbs look like before. So those are low beams. Hit the brights. Now let's turn, let's get a view on the wall where uh, this shines on the wall and see if we can tell a difference. So bear with my mess here, but there they are shining on the outside wall. It's daylight, so it's not totally dark in here, but again, It'll be daylight when I do the new ones, and so you'll be able to at least compare the two. So there's the brightness with the lights off in the shop and the lights on the wall. That's uh, high beams. There's low beams. All right, let's get these bulbs off. All right, so first of all, you can see here, there's no real access to the bulbs. There's one here and there's one right here, but you can't get to them all this stuff's in the way. So you gotta take this whole thing out. So we should be able to get this light out without having to touch anything else. And it's just this one pin here. And this should pop out. Super easy. So on the back side of this, there's not a lot of slack in this wiring, so you're not gonna be able to pull it very far. Rotate these, that'd be counterclockwise, about not even a quarter of a turn, maybe a third of a turn, you'll see those these pins here will line up with the holes in the housing. It should just come right off. This one's being a little bit stubborn. There we go. Okay. Let me just take that. We'll set up there for now. So here's our high beam light. Here's our low beam light. I'm gonna throw some gloves on because in case I want to put these back in, these lights are actually good. You don't want to touch the bulb. So just like I said before, I think with those LEDs, I, I did it, but it's not as big a deal with the LEDs, but it's a much bigger deal with these. These xenon halogen bulbs get super, super hot. And if you get oil from your fingers on the bulb, it will prematurely um, fail. So I'm gonna throw some gloves on just in case, also because they're hot. Now these lights just come out, you don't take the bulb out. The whole bulb is part of the, part of the electrical clip. So you just clip this, take, this is, this is the bulb. We'll just set that up there for a second. Some cars, the headlights on the high beam, low beam are in the same bulb and it just adds another filament that lights up. Some are two separate bulbs. So, you know, it'll, it'll vary from vehicle to vehicle as far as what, what you got to do to get, to change your bulbs. But generally all the same, certainly the GM cars are the same. Okay, so let's get these open. Let's see what we're working with here. By the way, totally separately, I came across this recently. It's a Leatherman clone from a company called Flissa. And it's a pretty good knife. And it's like half the price of an actual Leatherman. So if you're into multi-tools, 
and you don't spend the money on a Leatherman. It's not a bad little tool. It doesn't really say which one's which. So, on the box, one of them has a mark on it. Is it this one? It says it's the HB3, which I believe is the high beam. No, HB3 is the low beam. No, I thought the first time. HB3 is the high beam. Those are fancy looking. So, let's see, they give you O-rings to replace up here for water tightness. And is there an O-ring on the ins? No, that's on the clip. So they just give you replacement ones, I guess, in case you need them. So they come with instructions. They're kind of generic for different types of bulbs. What did I say? This was the high beam, I think. HP3, yep. All right. So this is the high beam light. It should be plug and play. Now, LEDs, I'll show you on the other one. The LEDs have a driver for them that drive the lights, a little circuit board, and that generates a little heat. So these have a little heat uh, fan on them. Some of them have a bit of a heat sink on them and where the like fins to try to dissipate the heat. And I find those don't, this is actually one of the pros and cons, I guess I would say the pros are, should be, it's gonna be brighter. And that's, and, and they'll last a lot longer. Uh, the cons typically are, sometimes they're too bright and they're not legal for road use. In fact, the, because these are generally not tested with like DOT, all, all of these LED light upgrades, I'll tell you they're for off-road use only because it's the only thing they can guarantee. They're not necessarily for off-road use only. They just haven't gone through the approval process to get on-road approval. So they have to be for off-road. Doesn't mean you can't actually use them on the road, but know your local regulations as far as your brightness of your lights goes, because if your lights are too bright, sometimes that can get you in a little bit of hot water with the, with the locals. Um, the other problem I have with all of these LED, these, these swappable LEDs, plug and play bulbs, is they get super hot. And sometimes they get so hot, they melt the plastic on the housing. So you wanna be careful, read through the reviews. This is nice though, cause it's got a little fan on the bottom. Now if you're in a confined space like this, that might not be good enough. It might still get really hot because there's just not enough, there's not enough space for the airflow to keep it cool. And usually what happens is, now when I said it like, sometimes it'll get hot enough to melt the housing. That's pretty rare. Most of the time, it just causes them to fail early. When your LED lights start to fail, the most common symptom is they blink, hyper blink, like super fast blink. And that would be an indicator that your LEDs are going bad. All right, there's the low beam. So let's get them back in the housing. Probably should test them first, but you know, what's the fun of that? Let's just put it back together and I'm sure it'll work. Put them in, and sort of like eighth to quarter turn clockwise. There is a, see that, that one did not lock in very really good. There it goes, I didn't get it all the way in. There's a notch on the bottom of these that sits into a notch on the, there it goes on the base. Where's our pin? Okay, now let's kick the lights on, see if we can tell the difference. All right, it's so just sort of a side-by-side -side comparison. There's the old OEM style lights on the left. There's the new LEDs on the right. That's the low beam. It is quite a bit brighter. It's also not just that it's brighter, it's a crisper white light, which actually in some cases is, makes things more visible, even though it may not be like lumens wise, it may not be any brighter. It will make it make things easier to see, but it will also be brighter in everybody's eyes. So keep that in mind. Again, there's the high beams. Mostly the big advantage in my view is the look, get the white light, looks more modern and the visibility, that, that clarity of light. It's like a daylight light versus a halogen light. So let's go to the other side and then we'll do that wall comparison again. Now obviously if your bulbs burn out and you're changing bulbs, then the pro this process is pretty much the same. 
that's how you get the bulbs out. This Lobium one does have a little notch. There it goes on the plastic in here. And it does make it a little bit tricky. You gotta kind of wiggle it out a little bit. It's, it was only on for a couple minutes. It's super hot. I'm not even gonna set that up there. I'm afraid it'll melt it. Um, now, if you don't need to change your bulbs, right? You don't necessarily have to do this. Just a nice thing. But if you are changing your bulbs already, well, maybe it's not such a bad thing. Which one's which here? That's the HB3, so that's the high beam. Yeah, same deal, like I did the, almost did the same thing on the other one, on this one. You're gonna put it in and turn, and then it's gonna feel like it's all the way turned, but it's not. Keep going until it's straight up and down, a full quarter turn. A full quarter turn versus a half quarter turn? <laughs> I don't know, that makes any sense. I'm actually looking at the back side of the camera now, and through the viewfinder in the camera, the, the natural light, I think, gets a little bit muted because of the outside natural light. So the camera is doing some focus light adjustment stuff because the light coming in the windows is almost the same color as the light on the wall because it's daylight out and these are like a daylight color. But to the naked eye, I think they're quite a bit brighter than the other ones. But uh, let me hit the brights and we can show you what the high beams look like. So yeah, there's high beams. That looks a lot brighter to me. I may not translate as well on camera. And it'd be interesting to then pull up the photos side by side and see what they look like, really, because some of it is just recency bias, possibly. But to me, that looks quite a bit brighter. So if you've got to change your bulbs out because they went bad, you can see it's relatively straightforward to change the bulbs in these things. It's not terribly hard. If you're thinking about upgrading to LEDs, you know, I wasn't considering really doing this until they offered to send me some. I thought, sure, I'll give them a shot and I can do a quick review on them and tell them what I think. And I'm kind of surprised. I actually think they'd be very good. I, most of these plug and play LED headlight bulbs are, are garbage. Like they do all kinds of weird stuff electrically. They, they tend to blink and fail and flicker, uh, overheat. Um, most of them, they really, they just nine times out of 10, every time I've ever done one of these things, it's junk. So I just kind of just stopped doing it. Now, if you want to get a nice housing with uh, onboard LEDs and maybe some creative stuff with lights, with light bars or halos or that kind of stuff to make it look a little more modern. Kind of like the European cars. I've done that. It's pretty cool. I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't knock anybody for doing that, but you're gonna pay a lot more money for those. You're gonna pay a few hundred bucks, three, four hundred, maybe a thousand dollars in some cases for depending how fancy you wanna get. So this is a hundred dollars, 108 or something like that for retail for these, for, for, for both high beam and low beam. I'll put a link down below. Uh, I do get a little bit of a commission on the purchase there, just full for full disclosure. Uh, but if you want to buy them on Amazon or buy them from there or buy them from somewhere else, you find them, knock yourself out. All I'm going to say is don't cheap out on LEDs. If you don't buy these ones, I'm not necessarily saying you got to buy this brand. Just don't buy crappy ones because you will, honestly, it ain't worth it. You won't like it. So spend a little extra and get some good ones. Look at reviews, look at the ratings. If you want to trust me on this one, so far in an hour, of playing with these, I kind of like them. I think that fan concept is gonna be much better. They're very robust, feeling very sturdy, the housings are. So um, I have high hopes for this. Now I gotta be out for dinner later tonight. We'll see how they look in the dark. See if anybody flashes their brights at me because they think my lights are too bright because that happened with our Jeep. I'm gonna be doing a few of these uh, successive videos over the next probably week or two of different products. I've got kind of a backlog of of sponsored products or stuff that they've, this, I've, I've wanted to pick up and look at, stuff that, that they've asked me to do reviews on. And, you know, you got Black Friday coming up in a couple weeks. You got Christmas shopping season coming up. So I thought maybe that would be something you guys would be interested in and seeing different suggestions, different products you might want to pick up. Hit the like and subscribe and hit the bell. If it's, this kind of stuff interests you at all, hit that bell because uh, there was more of that coming over, like I said, over the next two or three weeks. Anyway, thanks again. Appreciate you guys. And uh, we'll see you real soon.